Hello friends, it's Peg here and I've been wanting to try something. Um, this is a technique that I'd first heard about from uh, cloth, paper, scissor, Judy Ohl. Jody, excuse me, Jody Ohl had done um, a project using silks and clay board and a heat gun and I've been wanting to try this for a long long time just never got around to it it's one of those things that you know it's in the back of your mind you've got all this stuff in your basement <laughs> like I do and you're trying to figure out what you want to do so um, we're gonna try it today so what I have here this is a six by six clay board um, museum series panel from ampersand and it comes in a pack like this. This is an uh, eighth inch panel four pack and when they call it clayboard it's because of the coating that they have on top. Now to me this looks very much like melamine and <laughs> let me tell you I think I've got some of this stuff out in the garage and I will be experimenting with it but um, it's got some kind of coating on the surface which I'm assuming is the clay coat so there must be some kind of medium that has a clay in it or they wouldn't call it clay board right and so I have four of these panels and I think the key thing that I have heard from other people that have done this technique is that you want real thin coats now I've got four of these so I can play and I can use different colors and things and I think I think for the first one, what I want to do is some kind of a blended, I don't know what colors I want to use. I like, I like this gold. I like the red and green. I like the blue. <gasps> I like all these colors. Mm, but I should have some vibrancy. Let's start with this blue. This is, um, this is called sky blue. What's this one? This one is, doesn't say, this one is majestic blue and it's a little bit deeper. So let's go with a little bit deeper color. Hmm, I guess I've had these a while. They look a little thickish. We'll see. We'll see how it flows on. I may have to switch. But I think what you want to do is just get just get a nice thin operative word, thin coat of the silks onto the clay board. And I want to blend these colors. So I'm going to put my first color down and I should probably have a baby wipe out here. To clean up my mess. I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to wet my brush. I think I want a dry brush for this. So that was the blue. Now, what color do I want to use with the blue? Should I go with this green? Should I go with this green? I'm going to use, hmm, let's stick with this one. This one is Celadon. I think those will be pretty together. Oh, this one looks a lot more sheer than that blue. 
Can you see how sheer that is? But I want to come back into the blue and blend some of that together. Pretty color, but I can see already I'm going to want multiple coats of that. Now, what do I want next? Do I want to go real far a stream? I've got a green and a blue. Probably shouldn't put anything pink or red next to that green. Okay, I didn't think this out real well, did I? Um, hmm. Well, what the heck? I'm going to go with purple, even though it may be a disaster. But i got to start somewhere, right? Wow, now that's a real vibrant, rich, almost um, violet purple. Getting brush strokes in there. So I will probably be speeding this up.
for some dirty boards. Now that I've got them open for the air and everything's floating around here. So I'm going to set those aside. I have some small tile that I use with alcohol ink. So I'm just going to set these down for a base um, just to, you know, use this as a heat sink more or less. And then what I have is this is just a ceramic tile from the hardware store uh, I think it was 70 cents big deal right and then I have these um, hot pad insulated hot pad things so I'm going to put one of those down because they're metal and now I have my clay board that I've painted and stamped on and I'm going to set that down on there. And I think you can see the image pretty well. So now I'm going to get my heat tool. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Um, this is a heat gun thermostrip that I use to strip my woodwork with. Um, it's been a number of years. I got this at Payless for $35. Yeah, probably not going to get it for that price nowadays. Maybe more like double that. But, you know, it removes things from your walls, strips paint, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to get really, really hot. And it has... It has a heat control up here, and it tells you that it gets really, really hot. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on, and we're going to amp it up. So let's see. How does this thing work? Yep. Okay, I didn't really get any of the great big bubbles that I had seen. Um, I did get a cool bubbling effect, and I'm going to let this cool down a little bit before I touch it because it's very, very hot. And over here where I was trying to really go for it, um, yeah, it even changed the color when I put the heat to it. This thing is very hot. Do not touch anything with that metal tip because that will really really get you let's see if i can move this thing now so got a couple of bigger ones but i want you to see can you guys see that bubbling effect on there that's what i was going after You can kind of see it. Anyway, 
Now I need to put some kind of finish over that. And we'll see what we get. But you see, see down here where I really heated it? Yeah. Okay, so this is my test case, right? And because it's my test case, I'm just gonna let it rip. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this thing really, really hot and then come in and see if I can get bigger bubbles. So let me turn it on again. Okay, so I'm thinking about this, and it might it might have to do, I'm still getting real uh, smallish bubbles, and it might have to do with the moisture content in the paint. You know, my paint is not the freshest. Um, this thing really does, this thing really does get cranked up heat-wise, and I do get the bubbles, but... Um, they're the smallish bubbles and that's okay. I mean, that's kind of cool too, but anyway, that's what I wanted to show you guys. So talk to you later.